dealing with specifically strikers, but it does deal with uh, GM employees that are protesting over ventilators, right? They, they, they protested to convert their jet engine factories and their aviation facilities to make, pro to make ventilators. Um, and they basically were in silent protest. They stood six feet apart and they just didn't do their work. And they said this factory should be changed. And, and it makes sense because it's like, who's fucking flying right now? Like, who is on an airplane? You know, like there might have been some people that needed to be on an airplane in the very beginning of all of this. But I think at this point, it's safe to say that most flights are not like going anywhere. I think in the last couple of days, I've seen two airplanes in the air. So it's like the, no one's fucking flying. Right. And, and not only that, but like all the people that had to change their flights or try to cancel their flights over the last like four or five weeks, nobody got fucking refunded. So it's like there's all this fucking money just sitting there in escrow, I guess. But it's like they, they and, and they got all this bailout money, too. It's like they're fucking fine. So maybe you don't need jet engines being made right now. Like they're not looking to fucking make new airplanes. Let them keep the fucking airplanes that they have and then worry about it when like people are even even after all of this is over, people aren't going to be super fucking pumped to fly. The fuck? So, um, this also comes in the middle of 2,600 workers being laid off, um, and temporary layoffs of 50% of the maintenance, maintenance staff, and GE said that it, it's not requesting funds from the stimulus. Ooh. Oh, boy. You guys aren't taking the money to help your employees? Boy, somebody should really give, fucking give you an award for all that shit. Wait, does that mean that it's you're not asking money for your CEOs and the people that own your corporations, but you're going to give the money and reallocate it to the employees that you fucking fired? Doubtful. So right now, there's seven football fields worth of space that GE owns, these GE factories. Seven football fields that are just be unused, that no one's using right now. And finally, so I get, uh, earlier this week, um, they they did change some of their factories to start making ventilators under Trump's orders, right? And I gotta say, what this story really shows is that the average working class Americans have more sense of resource allocation than out of touch rich CEOs. Like, out-of-touch rich CEOs still wanted to make jet engines in their fucking factories when the entire country is like, we need ventilators and masks and all of these supplies because this is an upper respiratory disease, so obviously we would need ventilators, right? That would be, like, a thing that we need. So this brings up a really big question because it really seems like the workers are the ones that knew what they needed to make within these factories and knew like how to help out during this crisis. So why do we need CEOs and CFOs and COOs who are so out of touch that they don't know what the fuck is actually happening, right? They, they, they deem themselves to, to be these, these titans of industry when they don't even know what the industry really needs, right? They don't, they don't, they don't really understand supply and demand or it's that they do understand supply and demand when it comes to how much money they can make, how they can fuck over people. Like they didn't need to fire all those people if they were just going to make ventilators. Like then you could, and you could have used probably the fucking flight bailout money that you got. It really shows us that these community driven efforts that, that, uh, us on the ground level on a community basis, uh, are far more effective than large profit-driven motives. I mean, if you ever needed to see a glaring example of that, boom, it's right there. It's right there. The workers are the ones that figured it out, that knew how to go about doing it. Now, Elon Musk did donate ventilators to New York City, and he reopened his Gigafactory um, to, to go ahead and make them, right? His Gigafactory in Buffalo was reopened, so that he could um, he could make 
uh, ventilators for New York City, which is the uh, which is the uh, which uh, a friend of mine called it the epicenter of the North American pandemic. Um, so that's that's sort of I mean it's you know New York City is far more dense than a lot of other cities in in America, so it makes sense. That's where that's where it's going to be. Um, now, in order for this to work, in order in order for these factories to be reopened so that they can continue making the things that they need to make to help the American, uh, uh, like help, help America get through this pandemic, th we have to make sure that they, they're being taken care of. So this is where, this is where the importance of what these strikes are asking for comes into play and why it's so important, right? Because in order for this to work, uh, these workers have to be offered sick pay and hazard pay, paid time off, and they all need health care in order to do this because they are putting themselves uh, at risk during during a time where everybody's freaking out and telling people that they need to stay at home. And there's no plan for herd immunity. There's no plan for testing. There's no plan to really know who's got it and how we can take care of each other on a, on a medical front anyway. Um Plus, if these, if these corporations are switching over uh, their manufacturing efforts to make these ventilators, it means that these, these factories need to be cleaned and sanitized every single night. Every single night that they shut down, everything has to be cleaned and sanitized. This should be happening with every single place that is deemed as an essential place, right? Like, so grocery stores, uh, pharmacies, like all these places that people go to, like gas stations, gas stations should also be doing that because I think people are still driving, um, not as much, but they're still driving. And um, that means that these places need, uh, need to be sanitized and need to be cleaned up. So if you're really trying to flatten that curve, um, then, then make the effort. Why, why is, why, like, make the effort. Hey, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please like and share and make sure that you are subscribed to uh, get alerts whenever I'm dropping new videos. I'm putting out videos uh, pretty much every single day uh, during the, the, old, the old pandemic situation that, that, we're all, that we're all in together. Uh, so make sure that you guys are, um, you know, like, share, subscribe, make sure that you guys are getting notifications, um, and, uh, and, and keep up to date with all this stuff. Um, uh, what else did I, I don't have any live stand-up comedy dates to let you guys know about. I normally would, but right now, uh, they are all on hiatus. So, um, the best way to, to help is with the with the sharing and making sure that you're subscribed and stuff. But uh, if you have the means to and you can donate, uh, you can donate over at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. You can make a one-time donation or you can become a sustaining member, uh, whatever you are able to do. But it is, it is absolutely uh, not mandatory. It is a uh, extra sense of appreciation uh, for all the content that will be coming out. All of my content will be available uh, for free for you guys to view and enjoy. Uh, make sure you guys are taking care of each other. Make sure you're being good to each other. And uh, till the next one, we'll see you on the road. Thanks, guys.